Hello everybody and welcome to Walking Between Shadows. I'm Taryn Elliott and along with me is my amazing husband. I'm Ben Elliott. And we're here to talk about true crime all the time. Hey everybody, I'm Taryn Elliott and this is Walking Between Shadows and I'm in my room again because last week when I did the Christian and Newsome case, y'all, y'all showed up and it was a tough case to cover, but y'all commented, liked, subscribed, and that's what keeps this channel going. So the more, the more people I can get, the better and the more cases I can put out there and the more people we can help that have have felt these injustices in this in this country so that's why i do this and i appreciate y'all so very very much y'all keep coming y'all rock y'all kick ass y'all are the best so keep coming today i want to talk to y'all about a cold case and it's a case that it's frustrated me I've, i started researching this and i thought what the hell i mean like why is there not justice for these families so i want to talk to y'all about it today October 12th of 1991 was the night that forever changed the lives of two West Tennessee families and a whole community. Kathy Mae Stutes went into work at J&W Video in Milan, Tennessee. Kathy was a 20-year-old wife and mother of two young boys, Blake and Tyler. It was actually Blake's birthday the Sunday after this Saturday night. So she wanted, Kathy was not scheduled to come in to work that night on that Saturday night, but one of the employees called in sick and Kathy wanted to come in. She was wanting to buy a cake for her son's birthday and buy some gifts and stuff. So she decided to come in to work that Saturday night for the co-worker that called in sick. Um, she'd only been there for a couple hours when someone came into the store, forced her to lie on the ground and shot her execution style. They took $150 out of the, out of the register and they fled. Tammy Tidwell was working as a clerk just a few miles away at the nearby Country Oasis video store in Atwood, Tennessee. Atwood is probably about five or ten minutes from Milan, where Kathy was. Tammy was a 23-year-old wife and mother to a two-year-old little girl. She took this cashier job recently to help with buying Christmas gifts for her baby and her husband and family and friends. Tammy had only worked there for two days when this happened. Someone came in and forced Tammy to also lie on the ground and shot her execution style in the back of the head. She was robbed and they fled. Tammy lived for three days after this and passed away October the 15th of 1991, just a day after her baby sister Jamie's 15th birthday. Kathy and Tammy were familiar with one another. Um, I've heard they communicated by phone while working. So, I mean, that... It wasn't too much, and that was about the extent of it. One of them might call the other if they didn't have a movie and vice versa. So that's about it. So what happened here? How did this happen, and how did 32 years go by and no suspects? Well, they're suspects, big-time suspects, but no charges and no convictions. Um, we do know now that the video cameras were not – there was no video cameras at the – at Wood store at the Country Oasis. There was video at Kathy Stutes in Milan at the J&W video, but that was not working. And that is what I've found out, that the cameras were not working. So Dennis Reese and Michael St. Clair were named suspects soon after these murders. About a month before this happened, on September 19, 1991, Reese and St. Clair escaped from a Byron County jail in Durant, Oklahoma, where they were being held on separate murder charges. St. Clair was accused of hiring a hitman to kill his uncle and then turning around and killing the hitman. Um, from what I've read about this, St. Clair was into drug trafficking and his uncle had gotten in too and started taking his customers. So St. Clair killed his uncle and then killed the hitman. I guess he didn't want to pay him. Who knows? Great guy. Dennis Reese was awaiting trial for strangling and beating a woman to death. And this woman I know was a nurse. I don't know if they were in a relationship or not. During these two escapees' time on the run, they killed several people and they caused a lot of problems. Two days after the escape, newspaper reporter Tom Mullins received a call from St. Clair. 
The fugitive stated that he would not be taken in alive, and he would kill any law enforcement officer that tried to approach him. Three weeks later, on the evening of October the 8th, Near Elizabethtown, Kentucky, a state trooper pulled over a pickup truck which was seen fleeing from a burning vehicle. As the truck pulled over, St. Clair got out of the passenger side and fired at the state trooper. Fortunately, the state trooper was not injured. Just minutes later, the truck was found abandoned at the side of the interstate. Reese had tried to cross the interstate and blew out a front, his two front tires in the process of doing that. The truck was determined to belong to 55-year-old Kentucky resident Frank Brady, who had vanished 12 hours earlier after cashing a check at a convenience store. His body was found about 12 miles north of Elizabethtown. Frank Brady was handcuffed and had been shot execution style in the back of the head. This, what's interesting about this is, is that Frank was murdered exactly the same as St. Clair's uncle and execution style, and Kathy and Tammy. Authorities discovered that the vehicle that St. Clair and Reese had set fire to belonged to a 22-year-old Denver paramedic by the name of Timothy Keeling. Like Frank Brady, Timothy Keeling vanished after going into a convenience store. His body was found in a roadside ditch outside of Clayton, New Mexico. He had also been shot execution style. He was believed to have been murdered on September 27th, 1991. Five days after firing on the Kentucky State Trooper, Michael St. Clair and Dennis Reese were spotted uh, sitting outside in an old vehicle, an old car, um, at, right outside of the J&W video in Milan, Tennessee, uh, the night that Kathy Stutes and Tammy Tidwell were murdered. Michael St. Clair was apprehended on December 19th of 1991 in Hugo, Oklahoma. Dennis Reese was arrested in Las Vegas, Nevada on June, I'm sorry, on January 5th of 1992. Reese and St. Clair were both convicted in the murders of Frank Brady. St. Clair was sentenced to death and Reese was sentenced to life in prison. St. Clair faced a retrial in two different counties in, in October of 2011 and in January of 2012, after taking this all the way to the Supreme Court, St. Clair's death penalty was overturned. Also in 2011, Reese had confessed to murdering Timothy Keeling and pled guilty to the crime. In 2012, St. Clair was charged with Timothy Keeling's murder. In 2014, he was convicted in that charge, in that case. St. Clair calls himself the $5 million motherfucking man because taxpayers have spent $5 million trying to put this motherfucker under the ground and we have failed. He said, and I quote, ha 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 suckers, y'all have spent all this money on me and I'm still not dead. Er, it makes me wanna fucking, Urgh. For some fucked up reason and no one can tell me or anyone else why, Michael St. Clair and Dennis Reese have never been charged with the murders of Kathy Stutes and Tammy Tidwell. And this is very unsettling to me because it was his M.O. It was Michael St. Clair's M.O. to rob and to kill execution style. They were spotted in the area that night. They were charged on the, the two men's uh, murders that they did on the run. So that was Timothy Keeling and Frank Brady, they were charged and convicted with that, but there is still, after 32 years, no justice for Kathy Stutes and Tammy Tidwell's families, and that is very unsettling to me. Y'all, please let me know what y'all think about this case. Um, I've known about it for 32 years, um, but I did not know the details of this case, and after researching this and finding out that the two suspects sat in prison all these years and these other murders were solved and they were charged and convicted with those murders and we haven't done anything for Tammy Tidwell and for Kathy Stutes' families and they've gone through 32 years of hell. I'm asking every one of y'all to save the rumors. Um, there's been a lot of rumors in this story, uh, some that this was connected to the Debbie and Ambria case that we've covered, some that this was connected to, Casey McDaniel, and I, I do not believe that whatsoever. I, I feel pretty firm 
in saying that personally, I believe they already have Michael St. Clair and Dennis Reese in custody and have had them in custody for 32 years and they've not been charged and they need to be. So I feel like we should push this forward. I feel like we need to get this out there and try to get some justice for these families that have suffered for so long. Thank y'all for watching. I appreciate y'all. Oh, I appreciate y'all so much. And I'll see y'all next time. This has been Walking Between Shadows. Again, I'm your host, Ben Elliott, and my wife, Taryn Elliott. Look for our next episodes coming soon. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.